Hi guys, welcome to Station 2 of Station of a Class. Station 2 is Jesus is betrayed by Judas and arrested. And the, and the Bible reading is John 18 verse 1 to 13 and Luke 22 verse 47 to 53. So we left off yesterday in station one with Jesus praying in the garden to let the cup pass him by. But he decides to do God's work and face the cross. And, and right at that moment, Judas comes in to the garden where a group of soldiers and they begin to arrest Jesus. And, and, and as they arrest Jesus, the disciples freak out and Simon Peter decides to take action and the, what happens, I'm going to read John 18, beginning in verse, uh, let's see, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck in the ear of, of the high priest servant, cutting off his ear out. The servant's name was Malchus. So, John knew the high priest, and then that's how he knew the name of the servant, Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter It's a windy day today. I'm I bet you guys are all just waiting. You can't wait to know what happens. Uh, okay. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father had you given me? And then we, we know from Luke's gospel that Jesus picks up the ear and puts it back on my, on, on my gifts. Wow. So even as Jesus is being arrested, he is loving other people and serving other people. <clears throat> now, I want to ask a question that we all have to wrestle with, I think. And the question is, was Peter's act courageous? I mean, he, he sees his best friend be arrested, and so he grabs that sword and just starts pulling. That's... That seemed pretty courageous to me. But would it have been more courageous for Peter to show restraint? See, 
Peter saw Malchus as the enemy and he was willing to do anything to stop the enemy. Who do we see as the enemy? Who do I see as the enemy? Who, who am I out there swinging swords at? Now, I know what you're saying, like, Michael, I don't have a sword. I'm not swinging a sword. Well, okay. Maybe not, maybe not a real sword, but what about, what about, what about a verbal sword? What about a digital sword? We, we live in such a divided time right now, um, but I don't think that's the problem because we, we, we People have always been divided and have different opinions about things. But I think the problem is when we begin to see other people as the enemy and then justify cutting off their ear because they're the bad guy, we're the good guy. You know, if you, if, if you ask Peter, why did you cut off that guy's ear? He wouldn't say, well, clearly that guy is against God and Jesus and he needs to be stopped. So I stopped him. But Jesus says, no, no more of this. That's not the way of my, of my kingdom. You know, I think there are a lot of people right now walking around with missing ears. They've been beat up, they've been, they've been bloodied by the battle, and they are, they've been, they've been wounded, and now they're trying to wound other people. Um, like Jesus says, you know, during the other, <coughs> Turn the other cheek. Well, why did why did he say that? Because if we if we start slapping cheeks and cutting off ears, then everybody's gonna have a a missing ear and a and a swollen cheek. So, the question I want to end with, how, how can we put down our swords and show kindness to people? How can we be an ear healer like Jesus? And who am I most prone to wield a sword at? Where, where am I most likely to wield a sword? Is it on Facebook? Is it at work? Is it talking? politics with my family, where do I take up my sword 
and how and what would it look like to heal an ear instead? That is what I want to think about. And I'll see you back tomorrow for Station 3.